Lab Guy here. What we're looking at is the Cartrevision model MCA0001 Viticon television camera. This was intended to go with your Cartrevision home video recorder to record home movies. It is based on a two-thirds inch black and white Viticon tube type 8844. The camera was manufactured by UMIG in Austria in the early 1970s. I'm going to date this camera to around 1970 to 1972. Cartrevision built a lot of these cameras. They are not rare. They are still plentiful and you can find them all in unused condition. Barely any of them were actually put to use for a, a myriad of factors which I will get into in a moment. Back to the camera, it has a little, a little door in the front which you raise up which serves as a, as a lens cap. It has a really bad 3 to 1 zoom lens that goes from 9 to 30 millimeters and it's an f1.9 uh, lens. To make matters worse the camera has a through the lens viewfinder meaning that the the image in the in the viewfinder is derived with a, a half silver mirror splitting the image up like a periscope to bring it out to the viewfinder on the back. So immediately the camera tube gets half the light. This really affects sensitivity. If I knew how, I would go into this camera and remove that as the viewfinder is not that good anyways. So overall the electronics are very good. The camera produces 525 line, 30 frames per second interlaced video. It is a 2 to 1 interlaced camera. The downside of this camera, and the reason very few of them were ever put into use, is there are two reasons. Number one, instead of operating on 12 volts DC like any decent consumer product, this operates on 18 volts. This is not a common voltage today, however at the time of its design, 18 volts DC was the standard operating voltage inside solid state color televisions. Since the Cartrevision videotape recorder was installed in the cabinet with a 25 inch color television, it had 18 volts readily available. The second problem with this camera is it must be provided with a, a unipolar 60 Hertz pulse for the internal sync generator to lock to. This locks the camera to the AC power line so that any hum that gets into the video from the power supply stands still on the screen. Those are the two things that make this camera more difficult but not impossible to use. So let's take a look at the power supply. This is a little power supply that I purchased on eBay in around 2004. I can't tell you if it's homemade or if it's uh, low-end commercially made but it is made for operating the Cartrevision camera. If we look inside it contains two low voltage transformers, some rectifiers, filter caps, and an 18 volt regulator circuit down here. It also has the video output jack. This camera does not contain a microphone. It was used with an external microphone. So if we take a look at the schematic you can see that the output of the two transformers are connected in series. One transformer is 12 volts. The other transformer is 6 volts. They're both rated for an output current of 1.2 amps. The total output voltage 
of 18.9 volts is, recti is rectified with a single diode. It's a half wave rectifier and filtered with two 1000 microfarad ca uh, capacitors rated for 25 volts. This is the first mistake in the design of this power supply. I don't think it's the only mistake, but it's the big one. When the camera is not plugged in, in other words, when there's no load, you take the 18.9 volts of the combined transformers of 12.6 volts and 6.3 volts and multiply that times the square root of 2 to get the peak voltage that will be applied to the capacitors and it comes out to 29 volts. These capacitors are rated for 25 volts. When the camera is plugged in and current is being drawn, then the voltage drops down to a much more reasonable 24 volts on the capacitors. So this power supply has a design fault in several respects. One is if the camera is not plugged in, the capacitors are running about 3 volts over their rated voltage rating. The other is that the AC cord is permanently attached to the two transformers on their primaries. No fuse, that's two mistakes. And no off on switch, that's three mistakes. So the thing is always on. So if you were to plug it in, use your camera, get done, unplug the camera, and put everything away, but forget to unplug the pack, the possibility of capacitor failure is greater than zero. So, I'm going to replace these two capacitors, which are two 1,000 mics in parallel. They add up to 2,000 microfarads. I have some brand new 4,000, no, 2,200 mic 35 volt capacitors, which will do the job of those two and will not be over voltage when the supply is unplugged. The new capacitor is installed. Let's give it a test. I'll plug in the power and we'll hook the meter up. Check that voltage. And there's our 28.3 volts. But we now have a 35 volt capacitor and we are good to go. Switch to AC and check the hum and it's 0 .00, it's 0 0.01 volt of hum. The previous two capacitors had 0 0.67 volts of hum which means they were actually bad. So the voltage is good and the new capacitor works. So now we check the the regulated output which is right here and it reads 18.9 open circuit. I'm going to go ahead and hook the cable up. I made this cable myself. It has the 7 pin DIN connector, a male at one end, and a female version of the same plug at the other. The female plug plugs into the camera and the male end plugs in down here. So we'll plug it in and check the voltages again. And here we go. Like that. And we have the meter back up. And we check first our capacitor voltage. And it's now loaded down to 22.8 volts. Our regulated voltage is 18.8, which is good enough. The camera is actually on. So let's look at the video output on the oscilloscope first. We can see on the oscilloscope that it's producing a negative going sync pulse, some active video. You can see move when I move my hand in front of the scope or in front of the camera. Um,
can look at the uh, video waveform at the vertical rate and this is vertical sync over here and here at the beginning this is one field of video so the sync stream that this produces is a proper two to one sync produced by standard television cameras so let's have a look what it, what it looks like on the monitor so this is what I look like on the video monitor uh, the contrast is very low so I had to turn up the contrast and the brightness on the monitor which is up here from my point of view so uh, let's switch over to video capture now and see how it looks on the computer so this is what the video looks like under my photo floodlights in the lab here and being directly captured to the computer in 525 uh, 60i so as you can see it's a not very contrasty picture these cameras were designed to be used outdoors mostly and um, they actually came with an extremely long cable that plugged into the back of your console TV where the jack was inaccessible Carter Vision has its issues but overall as you can see it's not too difficult to make these cameras work and to actually use them there's at least one or two on eBay at all times um, they have a, a cash value without the power supply and cable of around twenty to forty dollars if one can be demonstrated operating including the cable and a power pack one hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars depending on the condition of the kit itself and whether it includes the Carter Vision microphone so that's uh, pretty much it for the Carter Vision camera I'll uh, put the schematic up full screen for you to study and uh, that's all I have to say about this so lab guy out <laughs>